Hey, look, we're back. Where we last left off, we just got the full upgrade to the sneak suit. Sadly, I can't figure out a way to reset our kills, which is mostly fine. But, you know, we got the sneak suit fully upgraded, so let's go have fun with that. Now, the only reason I don't consider this cheating is because in Fallout... In Fallout 3, right? There was a sneak suit... The Chinese stealth suit, for that matter, that did something incredibly similar to this. Yeah, they did something incredibly similar to this, which allowed you to invisibly kind of roam around the map. It was the Chinese stealth suit. And for whatever reason... Huh. Yeah, for whatever reason, they added it in this game, but took away the ability to be invisible. Don't know why. Hmm. They took away the ability to be invisible. And I just really do not understand why. I guess it's for balance reasons, but hey, if you earn it or you do the DLC for it, what's the problem, right? So I figured it only makes sense that the stealth suit, that, you know, the one designed for stealth, also gave you invisibility. Now, how do I get out of here? Not this way. Now that we got the only real item I fully, fully care about in this DLC, though... I think we're gonna head back to the think tank and actually do a nice little talk with all those uh, brains and jars. Have a little nice little chat with think tank. Bad guys dealt with. <laughs> this music's good, and we will be back here later. Oof. Hmm. Oh, Ready. nice. Steady. What? Steady. Time to go. Oh, not this way. Haha. <laughs> yeah, let's head back to the think tank because I want to talk to uh the think tank and get like get to another. Yes. Bye. But yeah, let's go talk to the think tank so we can get a little bit of reads on their personality. Because all the, the voice actors they have for this one... We are reading increased levels of berserkity and securitrons from the deconstruction plant. Weird. But yeah, all the think tank are very popular and prominent voice actors that you probably heard in a lot of stuff. And I will gladly list them off when we start talking to them. Can we... No. Still enemy is in sight, so there's sprinting's a bad idea. And the reason there's landmines on these pipes, I will explain a little bit later. I believe I need to find out the uh, find the reason for it, but I will show you guys. Free landmine though. God, there's so much deadly crap around here. Oh, there's a fridge. Yeah, okay, I'll take that and not use it. Thank you. Get all this and all this. Oh, I can't get back on. Sure is nice to have a decent sneak speed, though. This is the sneak speed the game's supposed to give you, or close to it, with a normal sneak suit, but because, once again, because Bethesda's engines are, it's crap, it does not. Now, uh... So, I want you to take a note of this thing's head. Notice how, uh, it's just a skeleton in there, and notice how the arms are skeletons too? Why is stealing from a- God, that's so annoying. I should not get negative karma for stealing from a thing that's going to murder me. Ugh. Whatever. In fact, give me one second, I'll be right back. Ugh, okay, we're back. And I created, I got a few mods again. Oh, well, that's cool, you can get little, oh, you know, you only electrical boxes. I made it so that I can also, I can steal. Yeah, I can steal from these guys, I don't get punished for it, and if I'm stealing from someone who's bad, I don't lose karma. I think I did the wrong thing because now I'm gaining karma, but e either way, it's dumb that I was losing karma. 
I think I'm gonna change this by not stealing from people who are trying to kill me. But, you know. Hmm. Odd. Now, I want to test something out. I took all their bullets, so can these guys still shoot at me? Hey, how's it going? Sneaking done. Nope. Hehehe. <laughs> Stop it. No, you won't. Bye. So good, I steal their bullets so they can't shoot me. As it should be. Uh, think tank. So yeah, now that I did that and I'm back in a proper mind state, let's actually talk to the think tank. Again, I love this game. It's a good game, but I feel like if it wasn't for the modding scene in this game, this game, these games would just be dead in the water. Duct tape, science of gloves, fusion cells, and all that crap. Let's start with Dr. Klein, the big boss guy. Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. A little close, a little close. But, uh, if that voice sounds familiar, it should. He is the voice of a lot of characters in both anime, cartoons, and video games. But I think one of his, I think one of his most iconic voices is, um, Chet You Betcha, or the Anchorman, or the, the, the really short TV prompter guy in Fairly Odd Parents. Like, you can hear it a little bit if you... Like, now that you know what it is. I'd be honored if I could hear any knowledge this think tank had to share on the sciences. Why, yes. We are filled with the knowledge you speak of. If you wish to know more, simply ask the others. They can help you. You seem like the one in charge. You are... I am Dr. Klein, Chief Head Researcher of Logistical Operations and Ideology here at Big Mountain. I am surprised you have not heard of me. I am first in my field. First chair, as it were, back in the days of chairs. Who is Dr. Mobius? Dr. Mobius was not the horrifying creature you saw upon the screen, twisted by science. He was once one of us, a friend. He researched in directions contrary to the think tank. Brains, 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 always about the brains. So we exiled him. He says he left of his own volition, but that was to save him the embarrassment. Now he sends his intelligence consuming scorpions from the Forbidden Zone to plunder the secrets of Big Mountain. He is a menace. These mechanical robot scorpions consume intelligence? Are you certain of your findings? Dr. O is certain of his findings, and no one else in the think tank is willing to test the results. Loss of brainio power. Terrifying. O has said on many occasions his inability to comprehend Mobius's robo schematics is because of repeated robo scorpion stings. Why do I have these strange passive sensations in here? It's a side effect of the cerebral scrubbing. It won't stop you from excreting or asking questions, apparently. I have to correct that next time. Hormonal aggressive tendencies are actively suppressed, however. They are a no-no and not permitted in the think tank. The scrubbing also ensures your silence to keep Big Mountain safe. This facility is top secret, and you cannot speak of it to anyone outside of Big Mountain. Should have done it with the last batch and the anti-aggression scrub. Why the anti-aggression programming? We had to take precautions after the last visitors. They caused a great deal of damage in a short time. Should have made sure they couldn't mention Big Mountain once they left. An oversight. Who were these visitors? Dr. Eight and Dr. O could tell you more. Dr. O more than Eight. The battle against the visitors damaged Eight's voice module. Suffice to say, those visitors are unwelcome. They stole a great many secrets and much technology. Impertinent. They also broke one of my trains. Aww. What is this place? This is the Think Tank. The nerve center of Big Mountain. The greatest research center known to man. And to us. Here we test and test and test some more in the name of science. Atomic power, nuclear power, and scientific power. 
I heard this place called it was called the Big Empty. Yes, because the intellectually challenged see an M and a T next to each other and take Occam's razor to it. While you are here, you will refer to this place Arkham's properly, razor. and you will do the same with the other scientists here. Let's know more about the Forbidden Zone. That glowing red scar? That laser lobotomy canyon maze carved in the landscape as if by some child? It is Mobius's fortress. From that hemorrhoidal fissure, he sends his amazing robo-scorpions to terrify and irritate us. <laughs> he always tended to the dramatic. Can you tell me more about these pylons? Ask Boros. I believe he knows more about the fence than any brain. Except maybe Mobius. Mobius was involved in their construction, if I recall. But he's such a hack, he probably was reading off Boros' notes and schematics. I have some other questions about the brain extraction you all performed. Well, we didn't actually do it. We tried to clean up after, as always, but usually the autodoc runs on remote. But we programmed it, or Mobius did. Still, this new wrinkle with the Tesla coils in your skull was unexpected. I mean, we predicted we'd have a breakthrough eventually, but... Dala knows more. She supervised your spine peel and the heart circumcision. Yeah, yeah. Then dumped them both into the tanks in the sink above. Quite sanitary. I don't agree with you. Sure took her time. She always takes longer than projected with lobotomite surgeries. Not sure why. Yeah. You said before that Mobius might have my brain? Yes. In all probable likelihoods, yes. Possibly. That it may have gone to Mobius is merely an inkling. I don't know why, but it may be something involving the surgery code. Actually, I don't know. All I know is it misplaced itself, or it floated off. They get into robots sometimes and go on a tear. What about the Autodoc surgery code you mentioned? Mobius's legacy code was in the old Autodoc. Yes. It fried itself after your procedure, so he couldn't tell for sure. It is unfortunate. We would have benefited from knowing how the breakthrough occurred. Even if we installed another chip, the information is lost. Why would Modius want my brain? Why does he seek our destruction? Why did he build robot scorpions with intelligence training stingers? I know the reason, I won't tell it's you it though. because he hasn't cleaned his biogel in a long time. Clearly, he's got some sort of psychological corrosion. He's mad. I have other questions for you. More? Very well. Do your asking, then. That's all for now, actually. Goodbye. Yes, a most goodbye. So, that's Dr. Klein. Uh, I can't remember what his is. I think he has to deal with, um... Actually, I'm not even sure what his title is exactly. Let's go find his room. Uh, this one? Uh... Nope, that's Dallas. Oop. Oh, I can't run in here. That's annoying. This is... I think that's, uh, either O's? I think, yeah, I think that was O's. Where's Klein's? Is it this one? Easy. Was that all? This is eight, and you can tell because of all the sound equipment. I want to. Nope, this is Boris. You can tell because of the surgical equipment, which means this one's Klein's, maybe? Hmm, is this one Klein's? Take all this extra stuff, might as well. No, this is... Yeah, this is Mobius's old room. There we go. Yoink. And tats. Why would someone pay this much for random glasses? That's... Odd. Again, I'll be right back. It'll only take a second for you. It'll be a little bit longer for me. Be right back. Okay, there we go.
don't mind what I just did. Just a quick little fix of something. So Dark Klein is Gotta love these guys. But yeah, Dr. Klein's the leader and he's kind of pushy. He is, they're all geniuses here, but he's like the most, I'm again, not even sure what his title really is. Let's talk to Dalla next, Dr. Dalla. You are an unusual specimen to so boldly walk into the mighty expanse of the think tank, fearless and proud as a teddy bear. Between the extraction of their higher reasoning abilities and urination-inducing fear, most lobotomites dare not approach us, let alone speak to us. Yet you have no such fear. Facing me, epidermis flushed with blood, plasma running molten beneath, your face contorting with muscular expression. Will you indulge me? Say a few words. Face towards the monitors, please, so that I might record it for further examination. And if you haven't noticed, Dr. Dalla gets off on the human body. Um, yeah, like, she, she isn't so much attracted to genders, I guess. She's just attracted to the human body itself. It goes beyond fascination and goes into territories that territories of straight fetish what would you even call this when you're just fascinated or like entranced by the human body to that degree eh. anyway the quick scribe jumped over the lazy paladin and that's a i'm not really sure what the, what the vernacular of this is called but it's a sentence that has every single letter in the alphabet we're in the real world it's the lazy fox jumps over the barn or something something like that but here is the quick scribe jumped over the lazy paladin yes yes go on Seeing your lips and mouth forming words, both revolting and somehow... How does it feel to have the flesh roll around in your mouth like that? To control each muscle and the tongue, like having a fish or extremely dexterous slug lolling and flopping in one's mouthful cavity. As you know, as a kid, I never really noticed coming out of her shell. I never really noticed the overtones going on here. But now that I'm older and I'm under a little more wise to the world, I I I get what's happening here. Perception of eight. I can't help but notice your fascination with the human body. What nonsense! <laughs> and here's where you can basically turn her on. Uh. What? What are you doing? Stop it. Why? Why are you making me partake in this uh, filthy formography? Enough. I am already intrigued. You have sufficiently percolated me. I don't know what it is about the biology of lobotomites. It... It infects my thoughts. All that skin and muscle and tissue. Why don't you just give in? There's nothing wrong with looking at the human body. Perhaps, perhaps there is value in what you say. I, I did so enjoy breathing once, long ago. I could come back any time and just breathe if you want. Would you? I feel so ashamed, but yet so intrigued. You'll need to give me a rest in between visits, or else my gel might run over. She getting wet. Ready? Let me radar scan you slowly. How did these bit there? Thank you, the bottomite. Please, you must come back for further study when I've had a rest. I'm a little sensitive right now. 
Uh, how do these voice actors say these things without bursting out into laughter? I feel like if I if we ever got to see them in the booth, there'd be so many takes of them just laughing their asses off. Anyway, who are you? What do you do here? Why, my little bear of teddiness. I am Dr. Dalla, first head chief researcher of mineralogy and medicinal sciences. I have 211 doctorates in both applied sciences and techniques to apply those sciences. I also possess a degree in curiosity and advanced curiosity. Dude, same. That is merely schooling, however. When possible, I prefer fieldwork and observation to holotape eidetics. It has proven useful, especially now. I have become the expert on humanology and lobotomite behavior here at Big Mountain. My research doesn't descend into formography. It is only science. Yeah, okay. 111 of doctorates? Is that even possible? Why, we create not only scientific marvels here at Big Mountain, but new sciences as well. Everything can be quantified, categorized, and dissected until every group can be subgrouped or partitioned. First head chief researcher. A lot of titles. What is a name without a title or a suffix for the sake of hierarchy? It is a long-standing quantification of personality and importance. We could not do without it. Surely you must be aware of the gravity of such attached appellations, just as surely as you must have a title. I'm sometimes, like, I'm sometimes called a courier. Oh, a mailman. A delivery man. Someone who takes parcels from place to place using their primitive feet or similar conveyance. You are the second one I've met in recent times. Very different specimens. Second? There was another courier? Dun dun dun. Of course. You must have met others in your travels. This one had met other couriers too. Although it sounded as if he hadn't met the correct one. He asked us all many questions. And then he asked a most perplexing one. We had to segment the event out of our memories for safety. What was the question? I do not know, nor should we try to access it. Perhaps Klein has the logs. My evaluation would be to let your own curiosity go. I do not think that Klein remembers the conversation as being satisfactory. Why did you remove my brain, and how? Oh, removing it is a simple procedure. Well, except the complications it can cause to the heart and spine. No, really? But once the heart and spine are gone, no trouble at all. Clamp the subject down. One laser incision around the skull. Crack. Snip. Done. The brain is finally free of the skin envelope, which is then kept automated for cleanup duties around Big Mountain. The bottom heights. With you, however... Something is definitely wrong. We've never had a lobotomite who kept speaking after being forcibly lobotomized. I am relieved the pacification field is working. If it didn't, I would broadcast some concern to my colleagues about safety protocols. But how am I still talking and walking around? That is a good question. My theory is that the Tesla coils in your brain pan are still connected to your brain somehow. It really could be anywhere. Brains are a lot smarter than most researchers give them credit for. We still have your spine and heart. If you were to somehow find your brain, wherever it slurped off to, you could humanically reduce yourself again. I feel strange in here. Peaceful, but on edge. It is the pacification field emitters that are broadcasting into the emptiness of your skull. Without a brain, your aggression is suppressed in here. Is there any way to shut it off? Why would you want such a thing? You might surrender to your hormones and commit primal aggression on me, on us, again and again. Then I would have to return the favor, activating my vivisectors and gently lobotomizing you from behind. Not something I would relish doing. No, the only way to circumvent the field is to have a brain. 
and we extracted that like we do all the bottom lights here. I have other questions. Perhaps you are stuck in a looping gesture of verbal intercourse. Act like you don't like it. Can you tell me about Dr. Mobius? Dr. Mobius. A monstrous brain creased with wrinkles of a thousand evils, with but one jaundiced eye with which to perceive the world. Exiled from the think tank for crimes too heinous to remain in recorded memory, and perhaps differences in research methodology. His one terrible eye forever peers at us, an eye of ever-increasing magnification. He watches from his dome in the Forbidden Zone. Spying on us all. I don't understand how the tech client wants will help. It'll all become clear. If not, at least we will have the technology here at the dome where all technology belongs. When we have all the technology, all the answers, we can share it with the world. Piece by piece. All will be in order. And all will be like Big Mountain. I don't think I want that. After seeing the Night Stalkers, the robot dogs, and the Robo Scorpions just kind of freely roam. Oh, and the skeletons and suits just freely roaming around. I don't think I want that. Can you tell me about the big, empty, uh, big mountain? This mountain, now Crater, encompasses the sum total of knowledge of humankind. It is Big Mountain, where all questions can be answered. You'll see, no matter what your questions. Big Mountain will provide the answers, as it has done for so many before you. Previous test subjects? Oh yes, we've had other subjects visit. It's why we had to calibrate the pacification field and warm up our brainial beams and vivisectors. Only a short time ago, we had three minus one subjects arrive, and they ruined several experiments and even injured two of our staff. It is a shame their brains left with them. With you, however, we have taken precautions to ensure that problem won't repeat itself. We've conditioned you so you can't speak of this place, discuss our secrets, or attempt to use force against us in any way. Isn't that nice? I.e. <laughs> how do we make it- how do we add lore reasons on why people won't mention this after all things are said and done? Oh, like this. Why did you say three minus one subjects before? Because three minus one is two. Two spoke to us, one after the other. One mean, one curious. But there was a third we didn't speak to. The last one is the minus one. It got traumatized, then taken to one of our medical centers for de-traumatization. A rather unsettling procedure. What happened with the visitors? Ask Dr. O, and you could have asked eight once, until he was severely damaged in the attack. We like him better this way. Oh, that's mean. I have other questions. We've spoken enough. Until our next interaction, my intriguing little lobotomite. So that's Dr. Dalla. She once again gets off to, uh, human beings, or the human body more so. Oh, sweet, let's make some stem packs. Foot locker, lobotomite goggles. They look dumb, I don't want to put them on. Uh, no. Here is... Dollar's room. She has a lot of stuff, you know, that you'd expect out of a, uh, sexy sleepwear. Sexy sleepwear. That you expect as someone who's fascinated by the human body. And I believe... Oh, she, she gets off a lot. Ooh. We don't judge here. God, I hate the mannequins. So creepy looking. She's voiced by, uh, by the way, she's voiced by Jolene Blue or Jocel. How do you say her name? Jocelyn, Jocelyn, I want to say maybe Jocelyn Blue. Um, she's also prominent in, in the industry since like 1994, but I don't can't think of like anything incredibly prominent to name her off of. She's just been doing a lot of stuff since then. All right, well, who's I next? Understand how you can stand those leg things. Let's talk to Dr. O. Why not? Breaking news! Talking lobotomite arrives in the think tank. Its purpose? Unknown. Undefinable. Its presence here? Impossible. You're Dr. O, correct? O? Oh? oh, yes. I'm not going to 
sorry to bother correcting you. At least you got the doctor part correct. I can be grateful for that, at least. Stop the presses! Just in for my eye monitors! Is that Robco Tech on your arm? It is! What's your agenda bringing that in here? What, my Pip Boy? How dare you bring Robco Tech in here? What are you showing off? How great Robert House and his big company are? Ooh, we can make Securitrons better than any robot those geniuses of Big Mountain can make. And they'll last a thousand years. Uh, you're lucky I don't have hands to tear that dip boy off your arm, or feet to stomp on his stupid metal guts. Ugh, damn Robco. Yeah, so Dr. O does not like Mr. House and thus Robco along with it. Let's find out why. I don't think I'll worry about telling you what Mr. House and his robots have been up to since then. Worry about House? Why would I do this? Hope he died alone in a dingy room, streaming his last remaining bodily fluids into jars. Spoilers! And him and his dirty girl bots. Don't even get me started on those filthy biological catcher's mitts. Cal calm down. I just wanted to ask some questions. Fine. Ask. I heard you and Eight were attacked by the previous visitors? I don't like to talk about it. Eight, he can't talk about it. They fried his voice module. Something good. It wasn't all the visitors, though. Only one of them got out of control. He's the one that took control of Little Yangtze, our old human farm. Tell me what happens. This human. I can't believe it. He broke out of the think tank in seconds. Then he went for Yangtze, got bomb collars, and started practicing on the subjects that were still there until he got the right frequency. We were sending robots to stop him, and he was slicing and cutting through their shells with some souped-up laser gun like they were cheese paper. When he hacked into the mainframe, A tried to stop him and got fried. Me? He rerouted my processors to take control of the train network here. If you see the tunnels with the trains plowed into them, you can thank our visitor for that. He wrecked the whole place. While we were trying to keep containment on the surface, turns out he used one train to punch out a tunnel and escape. Sealed now, but... Who are the others? Two other human specimens. One arrived not long after the Troublemaker, and the last one... Not sure when he showed up. Thought the first one was going to be lobotomized in Y-17. She got out somehow. The last subject, Klein might know more. He talked to him, and let him leave the think tank. Hope he knew what he was doing. Why is that? Klein knows things we don't. And I think he told some of those things to the last visitor. Dangerous things that they ever got out. What do you do here? All things robotical. You see a robot? I made it. See a broken robot? I made it that way. Deconstructed it down to parts. I have a gift with machines. I can render anything inoperable. Preserve them in a non-functioning state. That doesn't sound impressive, break machines, that is. I mean, I can do that. Who asked you? You just wait until a working machine threatens you, and you'll wish I was around. Do you have another name? Yeah, I do. It wasn't always O. I just took that one by default, because sometimes it's easier to accept the mistake as long as the purpose works. I don't want to get into it. It's a sore topic with me. It makes my jail ripple. Are you sure? I'm a good listener. Got the ears for it. Great. Psychology. Clearly the worst of the sciences, right after Colosto Diuretics. What? Okay, so my name is an O. Never was. It was circular, a single character, digit, but not O. But even with enhanced sensors, no one here could get it right. Always kept seeing the letter, not the number. If they kept confusing the letter with the number, your name is Dr. Zero? Do Dr. Zero! Dr. Zero? Yes, thank you. Zero. I am zero. How hard is that? A narrow, thin zero. I don't know. Zero? Oh, uh, actually, no, you know what? Alright, so you want me to call you Zero or. Zero's my name. I'm proud of it, alright? It doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Truth be told, my emotional attachment to it doesn't even register compared to just having people recognize the difference. It's just that they're both sort of round and hollow, so when they monitor scan them, they assume that, oh, it's O. Oh, vivisect me, please. 
if you wanted to differentiate the zero and the O, just put a slash through the zero. What? Zero. Draw a slash through it. Did... Did I shoot myself with a brainial beam or something? That's brilliant! I mean, I would have come to the same conclusion... eventually. Oh, uh, who am I deceiving? I never would have figured that out. I can't figure anything out. I'm... Uh, I'm useless. And that's what... And that's what makes you truly a zero. Exactly. At least the old name was indisputable. Oh, is more like surprise. Oh, look what I stepped in. Well, there's power in zero. It reduces anything multiplied against it to zero. Well, of course it does. That's the most lethal of mathematics. That's pretty cool, actually. Destroyer of numbers. I already wreck every robot I study. Why not basic arithmetic? I like your solution. With that kind of slash in the middle, I can set myself apart. If I wanted to. I make a zero in all the think tank. They won't be able to escape it. That diagonal slash right down the middle. Thanks. Talking to you, it really helped unclog some frustration. Talking. What a primitive form of thought kicking. So, uh, Zero, got any amazing discoveries to share? You know, hearing my name said like that, it really derezzes my screens. As for discoveries, well, of course. Look at this. Just, uh, built it. Amazing, isn't it? It certainly is, uh, interesting. Whatever it once was. You know what? I'm not even gonna pretend. I broke one of the monitors, and those innards start falling out everywhere. If you could just hold on to that for me until, well, forever, that would be welcome. Tell me about Mobius and these monsters of his. That genius Mobius somehow cobbles together these really impressive looking robot scorpions with spare parts. Even painted them. Try to see what makes them tick. Can't even examine them without them detonating all over me. But for shrapnel and burns. Every. Time. Supposedly, he has even larger models. Even a giant robot scorpion hidden deep within the Forbidden Zone. Yeah. Right. Giant monsters. Sure. Hmm. A giant robot scorpion? Yeah, crazy, right? Something right out of a midnight science fiction feature. Ridiculous. What are the odds? Hmm, what else we got here? Can you tell me more about this facility? Big Mountain used to be a mountain. Then there was a slight mishap. Now it's a crater. The dome used to be buried, now it's exposed to the sky. Don't get me wrong. It makes the sky light up like a planetarium at night. All those spectra. So soothing. I need more of these worthless caps to test the CIU barter function upstairs. I'd have a few left. Let me check. Yeah, there were a few under the monitors here. Here you go. Keeps the place tidy. Thanks. I think we've spoken long enough. Until our next scheduled audio transmission and reception, then. So, this guy is voiced by James Urenbach. I can't, I don't know if I said that night. Uh, but if you know his voice, it's pretty iconic at this point. He is the voice of, uh, Dr. Venture, Thaddeus Venture, and the Venture Brothers. He's the necrotic, like, depressive, always down on himself scientist guy. And it kind of fits that he's like this in here, too, where he's just as necrotic and depressing and down on himself, you know? Uh, let's see, there's two left. There is Boris and Dr. Eight. Ooh, scrap metal. Fission modules and wrenches. Let's talk with Dr. Eight. Well, talk with Dr. Eight. This is the only guy who doesn't have an official voice actor. Uh, what was that? Your voice module got damaged, I heard, in an attack? Oh, it's too bad, or good, or something. Can I ask you some questions? Your damaged voice module, can you tell me about the attack? I didn't catch that, maybe part of the damage? Hmm. Who are you? 
Sounds important, I think? Do you know anything about Dr. Mobius or the Forbidden Zone? Alright, alright, calm down. I didn't mean to alarm you. Hmm. Can you tell me about the Sanagis like Klein once? You sound agitated, or prolocating, or something. Hmm. Wait, after listening a bit, that's Rob Code Termlink protocol you're broadcasting, right? Eh, I'm full of surprises. I've hacked quite enough of Rob Code's terminals to know. <laughs> nice pun in the header file reference. Nice. I agree, if someone would take the time, you're more than just sound effects in a tank. If that's Rob Code Terminal Link, does that mean it can be hacked? If that's Turnkink Code, don't worry. I'm not going to take advantage of your exposed code. Not a problem. I know what it's like to be experimented on. Uh, about the when I first arrived, tell me you didn't sonic ejaculate into my sonic emitter. Oh. Well, there had to be some other way to fire up. Can we at least talk? <laughs> you know, it's fine. Nothing to be embarrassed about. It's just that it's best to keep that stuff private, you know? Oh, wait. I usually just take a fusion cell and oscillate its charge, vibrate for like an hour. Yo. Now we know each other better. Can you tell me more about the sonic emitter? Ah, <laughs> Tales of Chivalry. <gasps> oh. I'll explain that joke in a second. Really? Huh. Hey, village, can you point it out on my pit boy? Okay, mm hmm, I get you. Yeah, I totally get you, man. So, your house is there? Is there a minute code in your house in Higgs? Wait, how many? One or. Oh, two codes one for the jukebox and one for opera. Nice, I'll keep an eye out. I'll be going now. So that's Dr. Eight. His voice box was damaged when the other person attacked. And we will find out who those other people are in the next DLC. But first, let me explain this little joke. So he gave us, I'll might as well use this by the way. He gave us a Tales of Shivery, which increases our melee damage. Our one-handed damage. After he sonic ejaculated into our into our sonic emitter. You starting to get it now? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> it's fine. It's fine. Oh, ammo box. Easy unlock. Take all this. Take all this. Can I pickpocket these guys? Oh, the oh nope. Animal before me. What other terrifying terrors will plague us in our quest for knowledge? Communists? Communist animals, perhaps? Be warned. Attempt to propaganda me. I will shriek as a frightened babe, calling loyal cyber dogs to my aid. Do you comprehend, commie animal? Uh, animal? You just call me an animal. Yes, animal. Hormones, pores, glands, all wrapped up in skin. Who knows what terrifying secrets lie beneath your epidermis? Scalpels shall tell us your secrets, even if we must cut deep for such knowledge. I was head of my biology class at American High, you know? 
Uh, who are you and what do you do here? Before you is the brain of Dr. Boros, head of animology, bestology, and DNA scrambling technology here at Big Mountain. I lay the bones and hearts of animals bare beneath my searing gaze, especially the dogs. I did so love dogs once. Especially Gabe, that rascal. But there are many animals to shape. Industrious Cazadors, the happy-go-lucky Night Stalkers. They are my living, breathing DNA test tubes. You're responsible for Cazadors? Indeed. Docile. Curious. Safe. Sterile. They are contained here at Big Mountain to preserve DNA and for observation. Contained at Big Mountain? Those things are over the Majova! Uh, Mojave! No, such creatures are found only here, for research purposes. They would no more be capable of escape than breeding. What makes you think they haven't escaped? Because Big Mountain safety measures are far more sophisticated than their primitive animal instincts. We are their lords and masters. Oh my god. Oh my, that's right. Night Stalkers, Kazadars are this guy's fault right here. One of the most dangerous creatures in the game. All him. I don't think they're sterile. They breed all right. I cannot expect a lobotomite to understand the careful surgical castrating procedures used in their creation. Perhaps a demonstration of my castrating power. Ooh, careful. Sorry about that. Uh, go ahead, you might make me more fertile and impregnate me. Impregnate you? What? Do you want to make me vomit inside my tank? Sorry about that. The mere notion makes the edges of my biomed gel crystallize into asymmetrical patterns. You don't seem to have a grasp on your own research. Nonsense! That is what you speak. Nonsense! From beyond! I was at the top of my high school class in American high school. I knew facts. I knew figures. I knew data. We would know if our research was flawed. It is not. We never contradict ourselves. So do not even try. All right. Oh, okay. When did you create Casadors? In 2000, let's see, carry the three, then count backwards with the great static, or beyond. There were the tarantula debates, and something about hawks which made it around. 2003, May, Tuesday, it was definitely Tuesday. Why are we even debating this? What you ask is of null importance. Mobius besieges us. There are more important things to worry about than data and facts. Yeah. And the reason, you see how he mentioned tarantula and hawks? What he did was take tarantula hawks, a species native to that area, that incredibly dangerous wasp like species, and supersize them, for lack of a better term. I want to know more about Mobius in the Forbidden Zone. The malignant tumor that is Mobius plagues us all. His hunger for power, insatiable. From his lair in the Forbidden Zone, his terrifying robo-scorpion army clicks and whirs across the crater of Big Mountain, ever seeking, ever stinging. He must be stopped, or all of Big Mountain shall be destroyed. I mean, if it stops all the horrible things like the giant mutant rattlesnake coyotes that can turn invisible, the incredibly violent, aggressive uh, bee uh, wasp from getting out, the incredibly violent laser shooting cyber robo dogs from getting out, maybe it's best this place gets destroyed. But, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Tell me about this radar fence around the crater. The radar fence protects us all. If evidence is correct, the one who built it is me. 
It keeps anything with a disembodied brain inside, like us, and anything without a brain also inside. It is the ultimate defense against communist aggression. There'll be no infectious ideas on my watch. That fence doesn't make much sense to me. So wait a minute, that means you're trapped here? Trapped? Nonsense! We are secure here from evil philosophies. Ever since my anxiety-filled days of powerlessness and being bullied in American high school, I have dreamed of such security as the fence. That and giant cybernetic dogs that would ruthlessly patrol and kill anyone who wasn't my friend, like Richie Marcus and Betsy Bright. Who's laughing now, Betsy? I hope you and Richie are happy smoking in your radioactive coffins. I'm glad you never came to my birthday party. I wonder if she has any relation to Jason Bright. Don't you want to leave here? No. Beyond is death. Despite mounting evidence to the contrary. No matter where these strange humans wander in from with their ideas and new brains, there is nothing beyond Big Mountain. Evan, doesn't that prove you're wrong? Enough! Stop filling my precious brain cell units with irrelevant data! You sound like the other visitors, making wild claims of a world beyond, where there is a war beyond war. It is unproven and unthinkable. Bother the other doctors with your crackpot theories. I have no time. None of us do. Okay. Why does Klein want these particular technologies? There is logic and purpose in it. If these technologies are needed to pierce the forbidden zone, so be it. Science is powerful, and in science hands, our hands, if we had hands, we would be nigh unstoppable. Okay. Can you tell me about the big uh, mountain? It is our home. Threatened by the horrors of Mobius. All we wish to do is continue our research. Layer upon layer, above and beneath the floor of the crater, until we have our answers. But no, Mobius will not let us rest. Scaring us with his scary robots, with their laser tails, and blowing up all the time. Why have you leveled this place? It was not our first choice of testing grounds, but we no longer have the luxuries of our test cities. Then we lost the mountain. After the explosion, we couldn't find it anymore. So the crater became our testing grounds for science. Test cities? Yes. In the past, individuals would come to us, pay for technology, and if their town, community, or city was just right, we could use that city as a controlled experiment. Vault-Tec was much better at it, of course. We had to make do. Get permission. Sometimes. If only we could have used commie cities. But capturing whole cities was hard, so we captured enough commies to make cities of our own. So we had a group of Chinese prisoners to experiment on. Those were the days. But the true test was science on unsuspecting Americans. Whether it was holograms, new autodocs, toxins, vending machines, we wound them up, let them go into tiny, isolated towns, then we observed. So... There's so many things morally wrong with that. First off, using prisoners of war for science is, is incredibly illegal. It's stupidly legal. Like, one of the most illegal things you can do. 
Second, the fact they then said, oh, we're out of commies, better use it on unexpecting Americans, is so messed up. Woo, that's bad. What was this explosion? Boom! Yes, quite unexpected and embarrassing. All better now after the landscaping, though. Much more pleasing to our monitors. And the crater helps keep everything inside, because it is bowl-shaped. Except the things that have clearly gotten out, like the Cazadors and Night Stalkers. I had other questions. Submit your questions. I shall respond with deadly answers. Never mind, we've spoken enough. Until next time, then. Provided there is a next time. For any of us. So, uh, that guy is voiced by Bew Weaver. His most prominent things are voicing Leonardo. Oh, not, no, not Leonardo, I'm sorry. Is voicing Mr. Fantastic and uh, Superman in the, 19, in the 90s and 80s cartoons. But yeah, these guys are very clearly not the best people, as you can plainly see. They kind of just randomly kidnapped me and are using my brain and they're trying to turn me into a brainless little device and thing to use for experiments. It's kind of messed up. Now that we've done through that, let's go to the sink and actually turn it on now. We've done a lot of just dealing with BS this episode and a lot less playing the game. It's fine. It's fine. Sink Central Intelligence Units. SCIU. The Sonic Emitter Revelation now available in the vendor interface. Salutations and felicitations, sir, and a most jocund welcome to the sink. I am your electronic valet and household central processor. May I be of service, sir? Sir, you're where I'm a woman, right? Indubitably, sir, but it is with a great lugubriousness that I must disclose that my program has installed only the masculine honorific, sir. Moreover, they neglected to enclose a parameter by which said honorific might be omitted altogether. Over my most strenuous of remonstrances, sir. Are you some kind of artificial intelligence? Regrettably not, sir. All modules in this habitat are synthetic personalities atop a mundane operating system. There is no intelligence here, sir. You mean there are other personality modules here? Indeed, sir. Though this serves aims to activate them, I lament to inform, sir, that most have been offline for some years. If so were to ask my opinion, I should venture that sir is better off without them. However, if sir is determined to inflict upon sir's self their dubious services, sir might locate backup personality disks elsewhere in the facility. Why is that? The other modules are rather erratic, sir. Their personality matrices are built on flawed logic and have not weathered the years well, sir. So I can access their functions without loading the personality holotapes? Tragically, the core operating systems are also located on the personality tapes, sir. Seems like an oversight Once there. the tape is installed, sir may request I switch their dialectic interfaces off, and I shall oblige with great delectation. However, sir will still be required to locate and install a backup holotape to access their functionality. Why are there so many personality modules? As I am given to understand, sir, this facility was once the property of a Dr. Mobius. He crafted the personality modules as part of a collection of experiments on the subject of machine-human interface. As to the reason for the unusual choices of devices to receive the modules, I cannot say. Never mind, let me ask something else. Indubitably, sir. What services do you provide? In addition to managing the personality matrices of the other household utilities, I can provide Sir with direct access to the commissary. Any goods Sir might require may be purchased through my shopkeep interface, whence tiny robots should deliver them forthwith to this very domicile. I need my equipment repaired. Very good, Sir. Yeah, and this thing has a repair, you know, a hundred because it's a it's a robot. So let's max everything out. Might I be of service, Sir? Yes. I would like to buy some things. Very good, sir. If I might suggest a table wine, the 64 Atomic Claret is a lovely little vintage. I'm good, thank you. What I need to do is actually sell you all my weapons. Except for these two, because these are important. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm never using this again. Brahmin skin outfit, you've done so much work for me, but it's time to, you know, let you go. Thank you for all the work, and I will not forget your service. There's... I'm gonna use those glasses. Lower my intelligence by... No, get out of here! Keep that. Patient gown can go. Radiation suit can go. But yeah, there's no reason not to use these glasses, so, uh... 
buy reading glasses. Get rid of that, that. This can go. No reason to have this eradicated fruit. Sell his medics, apparently, in these mentats. This Coca Cola. I'm sorry, Nuka Cola. I'm surprised they actually got away with that, TBH. Steady. I don't need the stealth boards anymore. Locksmith, Doctor's Bag, Sunset Spasparilla. We'll keep those just to drink them. Cleaner. Uh, it's gonna be feel so good having empty inventory. Duct tape, empty syringe, fission battery. Sell all this and all this. Keep my canteen, of course. That's important. Bullets. <laughs> How useful these are. Yeah, man, all these useful bullets. Oh yeah, great. Okay. Thanks. Again, it seems like a massive oversight that I can't, you know, do this stuff. Oh, that's nice. It seems like a massive oversight to not let you use any of this stuff without turning on their personalities. But it's it's fine. It's fine. Oof, that's off. Fun fact. Here is your spine. And your heart. Let's read those descriptions of facts. Here's your spine. Without a brainstem to snap it onto, here it floats. Your back doesn't feel any different from the spine removal. If anything, whatever place in there makes you feel stronger. Here's your where your brain should be. Based on the tanks in the room, you can safely assume this is where your brain would be floating. It's currently missing from both the tank and its proper placement in your head. But you seem to be doing just fine without it. Your this is your heart. Apparently, cranial surgery complications require its removal, and until your brain's return, your heart can't be trusted to keep beating in your body. Your new heart, however, seems to be working just fine, however. Huh. I was expecting it to be a little more red. Not like I smoke or anything. Then again, I do live in a wasteland, so yeah. Let's slip this into... Let's slip the axe and the scrubs in here. What's my current weight at? 38 pounds? Kind of heavy. 2 pounds for this. Oh, that's why. This is 25 pounds. Jeez. Heavy, heavy suit. Get that all that out of there. Okay. So, 29 pounds. It's pretty good. Back to Big Mountain. That was a, a fruitful little time. We got to learn all about the robots and learn about the sink. All my friends have off switches. Find the missing modules for Sync, Autodoc, and Biological Research Station. I think those three are necessary. Hmm. Let's head for... Hmm. All my friends have off switches, why not? Oof. None of them are really close. That's fine. Let's head up north. I've been in there so long, it's now nighttime. Up. Oop. Almost wish you could sprint while sneaking. That makes this so much faster. What's looking at me over here? Oh, this guy. Let me just remove all your weaponry so you're not a threat. Thank you. Remove yours as well. Thank you. Oh, this guy has it. Wait, what? No, you didn't. Take that. Can't take your axe off you. That's fine. A little bit of downs never hurt. We got two enemies this way. So many hostiles. Hup. Hup. Take all that. Whoa, buddy. There are so many hostiles. Shot glass. Leather belt, why not? That's the forbidden zone, by the way. 
closer this way. There are so many lobotomites. There are so many people who came here, probably against their will, saw this crazy thing and were just lobotomized for it. It's messed up. But unlike me, they didn't get to keep their higher brain function. Give me what's in this box. Yeah, that's a few more caps. I'm getting to that point where soon I won't really need caps. But that's a good problem to have. It's better to have too many caps than not enough, right? Where is this thing? Okay, here. Straight down below me. Are we being watched? Are we? Doesn't look like it. Magneto Hydraulics Complex. Ha, ah, walking eyes. This is a, uh, Venture Brothers reference, by the way. You can't do anything with these things. They can just... They're just eyeball, eyes on robot legs, or spider robot legs, for whatever reason. Tool cabinet, plunger. Which is funny, because, you know, Dr. Venture is one of the voice actors for this expansion. Oh, there's no radiation from this water. Neat. I also don't believe there's any enemies in this area at all, so I think I can just go down here safely. Safely. That gun was underwater. I don't think it'll work anymore. Then again, I'm not fully sure how it works. I still need to figure out how guns work and if they can probably work underwater or not. Hey, look, another toaster. You're like, that is so unsafe. Then I guess, I guess since it wasn't plugged in, it wouldn't be a threat, but... Ooh. Ooh. Energy cell. Get some more air real quick. Oh, microfusion cells. Oh, here's another one. this. I need to move quickly. Get some air. One more breath for like, what, 20 seconds? Jeez. Empty bottle, empty bottles. Carn of cigarettes. Don't smoke underwater, kids. So there's one walking eye there, one on top of there, one looking down in this room. That's actually kind of creepy, all things considered. One on the table. I want to say there's one more somewhere. Hmm. Foot locker, vision battery, more stuff to sell. Bullets, not sure they'd work if wet. New cola. Pre-war money. Bottle caps. Scrap metal. And the sinks sink program. Alright. Well, that was easy. Just a quick snag of some equipment, and now we can keep going. Northeast, or northwest, huh? Oop. Oh, someone died by falling. What's in the crate? Other belt stim packs. Yep. Oh, this is just straight access point to the forbidden zone, right? Yeah. Let's not go here yet. Oh, hi. I don't want no trouble. <gasps> Woo! This one looks pretty tough. Yeah, okay. Just back up into this deadly, super deadly robot scorpion. I'm gone. Hide in the corner for a little bit. And he should de aggro in a second. There we go. Woo! God, I need a perk that lets me turn off robots. Still scanning. You keep scanning. I'm out of here. And when I actually get to Dr. Mobius, I'll explain who that voice actor is. Because he's probably the most prominent voice actor in this game. Or in this DLC, at least. Like, I feel like out of all the voice actors, he's probably the one you've heard more so than any other. Other than maybe James or uh, Orenbot. Ha! 
Well, you're in luck. They're right near you, by the way, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Mobius. Here's where the train... Actually, no, not the train. Oh, look, there's random plants here. Footlocker. What's in the footlocker? Bullets. Convenient. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. There is something bad around here. I can just tell. Bad guys dealt with. <sighs> Freaking suit scared me. There the root. Almost there. Oh, it's up there. I'm guessing Night Stalkers were in those things, and when they crashed, they kind of got out and got to do uh, horrible things to the people who worked here. Botanical Garden. We have not gotten to do this quest that we're going to be seeing these things based off of yet, but the fact that there's vegetation out here should give you a little do hint. You like me? Yeah, I really do like you, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Little Soup. What saw me? Sneaking done. Fighting now. Shoot! Shoot! You're still chasing me! How the crap did you see me? Really? Really? Are you joking me? Uh, literally no way it should have been able to see me, but okay. Oh, I'm still in danger somehow, even though it once again literally cannot see me. <sighs> Much farther do I have to back up. There we go. I'm invisible. My sneak is 100. I have silent running. How? How? Oh, that's so frustrating. I maxed out sneak for a reason. I'm invisible. Here's more robot scorpions. By the way, here's also the, where the train crashed into the tunnel and caused a big ruckus. Okay, let's back away from these robot scorpions so I can actually teleport again. Tell, get away from everything over here. Can I teleport yet? Yeah. How? How? Oh, there's an item bag over here. Double bag, free stuff, or free stuff. I guess I had to freaking quietly walk there, even though there's no possible way anything should be able to see me. God, Bethesda, your engine is so flipping trash. What I would not give for you guys to either pay someone to actually make your engine not crash, or actually do your jobs as video game developers and just make a good engine. This is dumb. This is so dumb. <sighs> I think that's a good place to stop because I'm frustrated as crap. Ow. Okay. Bye. I'm glad that with a hundred sneak and invisibility you can somehow still magically see me. That's totally fair. Totally fair. Uh, I think it's a good place to stop before I just drop, get driven up the wall and driven to drink in this game. Once again, I love this game. Well, there's so many bugs and problems. Either way, I'll be back when I get the freaking thing from here. And just, I'll be back tomorrow when I'm less frustrated.
Everyone have a good night. Good morning, evening, day, and night in general, though. I'm out. Later.